Now that our music has a pulse and it's nicely organized into our time signatures or our meters, we can start to figure out how to actually put different rhythms in there. It would be really boring if all of the music was like I demonstrated in the time signatures where we're just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, for, that would be boring if we had to play the same length notes every time. But that's just the structure of it. That's sort of the shape of the music. We can add different rhythms to bring out unique personalities. Thinking of our bodies again, our pulse and steady beat is just our heartbeat going. Our time signature is our body shape. So our height, our width, all of those things. And the rhythms that happen on that is more of like our personal style. So the clothing that we wear, the way our hair looks, all of those things that can be changed and have lots more variety. There's lots of uh, variety to our body shapes, but not as much variety as what we can do to sort of decorate our bodies with other accessories and clothing and things like that. And that's where things really start to get interesting is how we can change the different rhythms that play on top of that steady beat and that time signature that we've established. So my favorite tool for explaining this is the rhythm tree. Now, the way that the rhythm tree works is it shows us how all of the notes are related to each other in terms of how long they are. So you can see we have a bunch of different shaped notes and those different shapes and the different sort of stems and lines that come off of them are what tells us how long a note is and how a note fits into the structure of our time signature. So at the top here, we have our whole note, which is four beats long because it's a whole entire 4-4 four, four measure. So that would sound like this. If we have our steady beat going, it's going to last for one, two, three, four. It's four beats long. Let me play that for you and count along with my snapping as I play so you can hear those four beats. <laughs> So you could see that it was four beats long and in fact it actually even touched the fifth beat because it took up the entire four beats. Now the next one splits those whole notes into two. So a whole note is just that circle. Then when we have a circle with the stem added onto it, that tells us it's a half note. A half note is half the value of a whole note. So half of four is two. So these half notes are each going to get two beats. One, two, three, four. We're still going to count one, two, three, four because we are in our four, four time signature. So we have to account still for all four of those beats in the measure. But now instead of just one whole note taking up the entire measure of four beats, now we have two half notes. So again, count along. One, two, three, four. Count along with my snapping while I'm playing. Two, ready, go. So you can see how that fits two steady beats, full steady beats in each of those half notes. Now those half notes will get split up again into a note that you probably recognize from the time signatures that we were doing. And this note is a quarter note. So it looks a lot like a half note where it's our note head with the stem on it. But now instead of an open note head for the half note, it's filled in and is solid. And that's a quarter note. So if a quarter note is half of a half note, a half note is two beats, half of two becomes one beat now. Just like we were counting with our time signatures of one, two, three, four, that's exactly how this works. So try counting along as I play this one. Ready, go. And that's the way quarter notes work. Now we're gonna get really exciting and split up those quarter notes. So if you've ever taken a whole and split that up, it's not going to split up like our four going into two and two going into one. Now we're splitting into halves. So that one quarter note is going to split into two eighth notes. So an eighth is half of a quarter. So that's why quarter note split up becomes eighth notes. So our eighth notes, the way we count them are one and two and three and four 
and. The reason why we can't just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is again because of the way our time signature works. We're in four, four, so there can only be four numbers in four, four because that's the structure that we're dealing with in four, four. So to get those half notes, we call them as ands. To get the eighth notes that are splitting the, the quarter note in half, we call those ands. So you notice that one, two, three, four still lines up with where those quarter notes are, but those eighth notes just give us another one in between. So I'm gonna play that and I want you to count along one and two and three and four and. Let's give that a try. Ready, go. Yeah, you see how that works where our notes are getting faster and now there's two notes per one beat. Let's try that again, counting it. Three, four. One more time, two, ready, go. So that's how our eighth notes work. Now we can split those up even another time, we could actually split them up a lot more times, but we're just gonna demonstrate one more split up. So if our four quarter notes turned into eight eighth notes, now we're turning into 16 sixteenth notes because we have to have twice as many per measure because we're splitting up one eighth note into two sixteenth notes. So that's why we're doubling that. So you can imagine if we split our sixteenth notes up again, they would be 16 times two which would be 32 30 second notes. But for now, let's focus on 16th notes. And you'll notice that for the counting on this, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, that we still have our numbers that line up with where the quarter notes were. And we also have the ands that line up with where the eighth notes were. But now we have extra letters in between. So the eighth note on one split into one E, the eighth note on the and split up into and a uh for each of the beats. So let's start by just getting our steady beat going. Let's go a little bit slower on the steady beat since these are gonna be much faster notes. And let's practice saying one E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh. Let's try it together. Ready, go. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. Again, just saying it. Ready, go. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. So that's how 16th notes count. Now can you try keeping your steady beat going and counting those rhythms as I play them? Ready, go E and a. Uh. <laughs> And that's how 16th notes work. And like I said, we can keep splitting these up and get faster and faster notes, but that's as fast for now as we're going to need. And you can see how these different rhythms fit together and how they're related to each other with the whole note up at the top being our big whole measure. Then we split that into half notes and split those into quarter notes and eighth notes and 16th notes. And again, we could go on and on. So that's how the rhythm tree works. Now I wanna share with you a really great exercise that you can practice anytime to get really comfortable with how these rhythms work. So I call this exercise the subdivisions exercise because that's how these different rhythms are working is we're taking that whole note and then we're subdividing it into smaller and smaller note values. So for the subdivision exercise, what we're going to do is get our steady beat going in 4-4 four, four, and we're going to count through each of these rhythms. I really encourage you to do this exercise regularly. I think this is the most important exercise that you can be doing in the rhythm section of this series because this is what will help you to have your steady beat going and get a great understanding of how all of these notes work and rhythms work so that you can play them if you ever encounter them in music that you're playing or just so you can know them and maybe when you're listening to music you might start hearing some of these different rhythms in the steady beat. So let me go ahead and demonstrate how this exercise is going to work and then we can try doing it together. So first we're going to get our steady beat going and then we're going to count through whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, and then we're gonna work our way backwards. So we're gonna take our big whole note, split it up, and then build it back together. So it sounds like this. 
One and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one and two and three and four and one two three four one two three four one two three four and you can hear how I'm sort of singing along so that on the, the whole note and the half note where it goes through multiple beats, I'm still saying those beats to keep track of them. But like you remember when I was playing on my clarinet, it just stayed sustaining through the whole time. So we want to be really clear about where the notes start and how long they sustain for. So let's try doing that together now. So get your steady beat going and try to match my steady beat. You can tap your foot. You can clap, you can snap, whatever you want to do, but get that beat going. Maybe move your body to it a little bit so you're really steady, and then get ready to count through these rhythms. So starting with a whole note, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one and two and three and four and one two three four one two three four one two three four and it's all right if you need to rewind and try this a few times, but the better you can do this exercise, the better your rhythm's going to be. Now, let me tell you about another little secret that I have for you, and this is a secret for how to practice really effectively. If you do this exercise right now in this video, but you never do it again, you're not gonna remember how to do it and you're not gonna get better at doing it. But if you practice it every day, that's going to make you get better. You don't have to practice every single day. You can practice more than once a day, but what really has to happen is that you're practicing it regularly. You can't just do it once and then forget about it. With music, we have to always be practicing. So my secret for practicing regularly is something that I call habit stacking. And this is a really great exercise because it doesn't take any setup. You can use a metronome. If you have a metronome, it's great recommendation. The metronome's a great friend to help you out with that steady beat, but you can do it on your own with your own steady beat with no preparation. So you can do it at any time throughout the day. And I bet you already have some things that you do regularly throughout the day. Maybe you brush your teeth, you probably eat at some point during the day, breakfast or lunch or dinner. Maybe you change into your clothes in the morning or maybe you change into your pajamas at night. Any of those is something that you already are doing every single day. So the trick to habit stacking is doing your practice along with one of those other habits. So let's take, for example, changing into your pajamas at the end of the day. So when you've gone through your whole day, you're getting ready for bed, you put your PJs on, and what I want you to do is, once your PJs are on, I want you to do this subdivision exercise. Or maybe even before you put your PJs on, you do this subdivision exercise. But if you build that connection of, whenever I'm putting my PJs on, I go, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and go through the whole exercise, then you're not going to forget to do it. You're going to be doing it regularly and you're gonna get better at doing it and you're gonna have amazing rhythm. So that's my little secret for you on how to get better at things that you need to practice regularly and how to never ever forget to practice.